Hello everyone, I am Jitu Patel. I'm the Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Security and Collaboration Business at Cisco. And we have another episode of Designing the Future of Work that I'd love to welcome you to, so welcome. And I have with me a very special guest today that I will introduce in just a moment, but just to let you know what this Designing a Future of Work series is, it's a monthly series on really showing you how work is transforming and specifically how WebEx is making some massive innovations at the forefront of this movement with a variety of you know, kind of breakthroughs that are happening and not just the technology, but the cultural aspect of how people are working. And in this new world that we are living in, which is the, where the future of work is definitively going to be hybrid. Some people are going to work from home. Some people are going to work in the office. Some people are going to work, work somewhere in the middle. It's going to be more and more important that we provide the right level of knowledge and insights to the people so that 3 billion kind of digital workers on the planet can have equal access to opportunity regardless of where they are, regardless of their geography, regardless of their language preference, regardless of their personality type, if they're an introvert or extrovert, regardless of the technical proficiency level. We want to make sure that we can level the playing field. And that's, that's the thing that we get so excited about at Cisco. So today, I'm excited to talk to you about another very, very exciting innovation, which is people insights. And in fact, I have a very special guest, like I mentioned, Gianpaolo Barozzi, who's the senior director of people and communities at Cisco. And he's better known as GP, but I love his name. And uh, GP, welcome. And did I, did I say your name correctly? Did I pronounce it correctly? Perfectly, perfectly did. Thank you, G2. Excellent. Well, welcome. And the, the story that a lot of people don't know about, uh, about you and about this whole project is that the way I understand it, at least, you had a brilliant idea and you brought it to the engineering team at WebEx and you felt like this could be something that dramatically changes the way that people are going to work and connect with each other and make sure that they can also maintain their well-being. And this idea nicely aligned with what we had built as a core foundation with WebEx graph capabilities. And then we were able to build on top of that with this kind of notion of people insights, which is what we're here to talk about. And can you just give the audience and the listeners a little bit of a background of what were you thinking that had you come up with this idea? And what was your um, you know, original genesis of like, this is why you thought it was so important because you, you certainly were, without you, this would have not happened. And without the partnership, I don't think we would have come up with as, as potent um, an offering as we have. So firstly, congratulations and thank you. But to tell us thank a little you. bit about it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, indeed, in G2. I think the, uh, the, the collaboration between our two teams is actually manifesting this future of work, right? You have, uh, you have an innovation team in HR that is working with a collaboration engineering team that was open to listen to our ideas and leverage our, our insight. And now we're forming this new dynamic agile team to, to develop a product together. So that, that's exactly perfectly in line with, with, with the series. Um, when we started, we actually, before we get to the features, I, I kind of like the, the fundamental beliefs that, right? And I think both ends, you know, the engineering and HR. One is that work and collaboration are now two sides of the same coin. And so how you collaborate with whom, when you collaborate is success critical for you doing your job. And the second one is that sustained productivity cannot happen without the well-being of the individual and the well-being of the team. And the team has an important element into, you know, into the future of work. And so the, the feature are mainly divided into three dimensions, if you want. You have personal insights that are devoted to the individual only, not to their manager, not to their boss, to them only, and are really allowing them to understand how, when they collaborate, to act upon it and to make sure that they can do it according to their preferences and goals. Then you have teams. And we treat teams as a collective so that we start providing to, to teams the way in which they operate, not only internally, but particularly externally, leveraging the, the wider organization, who they connect, their network, if you want, and finally organization. And, you know, people in, in your role, it's very difficult to really understand how your function, how much your function are collaborating. Are they collaborating at the extent and the way you want them to do? And now we can see, we can have this 
wider and high level look. So those are the three fundamental yeah. dimensions. Are sales and marketing actually talking to each other? Are product exactly. and engineering actually talking to each other? Because if they aren't, then the chances of the relationship not being as strong actually is very clear why that's the case, right? So and now you, so, you mentioned something very interesting, which was it is something for personal insights, it's something that's built not for the boss, but for themselves as individuals. Uh, and what you mean by this is, this is not something that you're going to share broadly as data. And this brings me to a question, because this is a unique perspective compared to what some of our competition has taken. So can you tell us a little bit about how People Insights is different from the competition's approach? And what separates us and our philosophy from some of the competitive players in the market? Yeah, I would, I would call out two main, two main elements to start. So the first one is exactly what you said. We decided not to help develop or, or reinforce a culture of control and supervision. We really wanted to create and to develop a culture that is empowering people to nurture the right relationships and to nurture the way in which they are working at their best based on their own preferences and on their own goals not needing the supervision of their manager or having their work structured by somebody else. So the first is really a, a different way of looking at the culture that we want to create, mm -hmm. empowering them. The second one is the idea of teams. We're moving out from the uh, standard hierarchical view where teams are individual elements working by themselves independently. We know that if you want work is actually happening in the white spaces between the, the boxes of the hierarchical yeah. structure. So we believe that teams are pulsing node of a larger network. And so the way in which those teams are uh, able to leverage their collective connections, the way in which they collaborate, whether they collaborate with the right uh, interfaces and with the right stakeholder is fundamental. So I would call out these two elements, leaving the you know, the, the inspection world and providing a new idea of teams. Yeah, that's a really interesting point because I, I have seen this, that this, this entire kind of area has always been looked at as a manager inspecting on their people. And in fact, I'm not necessarily certain that increases productivity. I think it actually decreases productivity because now you, you're just watching over your shoulder to see if you know, it's, so it's, it's, it's not a particularly kind of healthy way to go out and operate. So you have to be the empowerment engine as a manager, not as someone who is a supervisory engine. Uh, and then the second thing that you talked about that's really interesting is this notion of the ability to nurture relationships and having that kind of fabric. And now as, as we think about all of these and we think about the personal insights specifically and how you think about all of these capabilities, Privacy and security are at the forefront for us as Cisco. And, you know, tell us a little bit about how you thought about that in the design consideration of this people insights capability. What it means for us means that privacy is not an afterthought, actually is at the beginning of our design. So even before starting the design, the question is, how are we going to manage people data? And, and one of the fundamental view, if you want, is still, uh, what do you think about your people? We believe that we are hiring smart, mature professionals that don't need to be overlooked. They don't need, don't need to have paternalistic direction from their manager. We believe that they are good and be able to take the right decision when they have the right insight and intelligence to work at their best. And we know that when they work at their best, they are succeeding and Cisco is succeeding. Yeah. So it's not just, you know, security or privacy is uh, by design and is actually the manifestation of what we believe our people are sure that we want to create. So it's fundamental for us. Yeah, and this is kind of the, the design point over here that was really interesting was if you think about, you know, privacy being a basic human right, as you said, one of the things to keep in mind is when we design this capability for one person, we don't automatically assume that others will have access to that data. Right? And so what you said earlier, which was, you know, the personal insights are built for you, not your boss, 
if you give me an insight that says in the 17 meetings I've had in the past two weeks, G2, or past two days, you've been late to 15 of them by more than five minutes. That is really interesting data for me to know. It's really bad for my boss to know that if I don't want them to know that. And so I don't want to make sure that that actually gets prematurely shared, shared because that would not, not make me feel comfortable. And so those are the kind of things that, by the way, my boss unfortunately knows uh, the meetings I'm late in because I have a lot of meetings with them. And they, but in, in general, I think it's pretty important, right? And so that, that's one of the things to keep in mind. What you're saying is we built privacy and security from the get-go of the inception point of design rather than an afterthought. Now, absolutely, absolutely. We are entering into this kind of very new age of insights for the betterment of people and people want more feedback and people want to know how they could be more data driven. And what does the future look like in the next three to five years as we as we look out a little bit, GP? Tell us a little bit of what you see. Well, you know, we've been all impacted by, you know, by the pandemic. I mean, I'm sitting in Italy. We've been hit pretty hard. Uh, at the same time, I believe that we are really facing a pivotal moment for the, for the future of work. We're going to finally leave the structured world of the, the world of the assembly line of Friedrich Taylor and its management style. You know, we are getting into a world where relationship and agility and fast execution and resilience is going to be is going to be important. And so it's going to be extremely uh, important how you're going to leverage your network and how you're going to leverage the people that you are collaborating and the people that you have collaborated with in the past. Uh, let me quote you one thing from from the, the, the principle of scientific management from Friedrich Taylor. He wrote, yeah. "In the past, the human being has been first. In the future, the system must be first. The first objective of any good system must be that of developing first-class human being. And, and we know that Fantastic. by far too many leaders, too many platform and people analytics are still operating in, through these orders, right? Yes. What I believe is that we are really at the, at the forefront of a new renaissance of work, bringing the human being at the center. And um, Cisco, through WebEx is actually doing the first step to make this future happen by providing the right level of intelligence and uh, insights to individual and teams to operate in this new networked organization and world. And, and you know, I mean, who else than Cisco? The global leader in networking is able to power the human network for all. So networks, people at the core and who you collaborate with are going to be front and center for me. Well, GP, I have to tell you that this is one of the more invigorating and exciting projects because it fundamentally changes how people think about their jobs, can learn from their jobs, and we can as systems provide insights into people so that they can get a greater degree of appreciation for how they are operating, how the teams are operating and how an org as a collective organism is operating. So thank you again for all the thought leadership that you've shown us. Thank you for all thank the you. partnership that you've shown us. And most importantly, I'll tell you this, I've spoken to a lot of customers about this. I've spoken to a lot of partners about this. And um, this is something truly special. And I'm really looking forward to taking this to the market and seeing what the customer user feedback is. Now, we've been talking about this for a bit. When do we think we're going to have this in customers' hands and when is it going to be available, GP? Do you have any insight on that? Well, thanks to the, to the, to the amazing team that we have working on it. It's going to be this summer and then it will be the first release and then we will have continuous releases going deeper into the insights that we're going to provide. That's fantastic. So uh, people insights, which is going to include personal insights, team insights, and org insights. Org insights. Starting availability this summer for some of those components, and then on a continuous strip mode thereafter. What a pleasure it's been talking to you, GP. Thank you for everything that you do for Thank us. You. And looking forward to having many, many more of these conversations as we learn more about how people are finding these innovations as they um, go through the day. So thank you again Thank you. for taking the time. Thank you.